So my fulcrum is going to be right off the triquetrium. That's where my fulcrum is. My stationary arm is lined up with the lateral ulna to the olecranon. All right, and my moving arm is going to be the fifth metacarpal. So essentially, this is exactly what we're doing. So I get, I, I make my visual estimate. I say that's about 70, actually, maybe. Um, let's line you up here. Triquetrium, fifth meta metacarpal. Now this is the other thing. Uh, there's some tissue here. Your that's rude. <laughs> I'm saying it's your muscle. It's your muscle. It's your uh, the uh, digiti flexor digiti minima. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, you have to make sure you're not using that tissue as your landmark. It's got to be the bone that's the landmark. Okay. And do not use the pinky as the landmark. It's the metacarpal that's your landmark here. So we're here. We're there. And I'm going right along all the way up the the uh, humerus or ulna rather to the olecranon here. And I can just bring her back. And I'm at 70 right there. Okay? So that's wrist extension. Now, for wrist flexion, uh, norm for wrist is 70. 70 is normal for that. For wrist flexion, we're going to use, we're going to let her hand drop off the table. We're going to let gravity kind of bring her wrist down. I don't want her supinated. I want to keep her pronated. So let's have you scoot. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. You okay here? Fine. All right. And I'm basically, you guys can't see this at all. It's the same landmarks, but I'm just measuring this way with the elbow off the table. Right, and I would not have my patient sitting like this either. But so you guys can see, that's how we're going to measure wrist flexion. So I'm going to bring her down. Here we go. And, and 80 is normal for wrist flexion. Okay? So the wrist has to be off the table? The wrist should be off the table. Yep. So the patient's, the patient's forearm, you could just say their forearm stays on the table. You extend them, okay, toward the ceiling, fingers toward the ceiling, and then for flexion, it's fingers toward the floor. All right, so for flexion, the fingers go toward the floor. What are the norms? 80 for flexion and 70 for extension. And the stationary arm is the same? Stationary arm is the same, moving arm is the same. The fulcrum? Fulcrum is the same, triquetrium. All right? So you guys good with that one? All right. Now, let's find your, your capitates, because the next motions we're going to do are your uh, radial and ulnar deviation. So take your third, find your third metacarpal, and follow it down until you feel a little bit of a divot. You feel a little bit of a... Depression? Depression. Yeah, I was going to say divot, depression. If you bend your wrist back up, or if you flex your wrist, you'll feel something kind of pop up. Mm -hmm. That's your capitate, okay? So your capitate is your fulcrum for radial deviation and ulnar deviation. Okay? So that'll be our fulcrum. So your stationary arm, I'm sorry, your moving arm is third metacarpal, and your stationary arm is the um, mid shaft of the forearm, essentially. Middle of the forearm. Up to the lateral epicondyle. Good? So here we go. Stationary arm, all right, fulcrum over the, uh, the, 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 the capitate. Thank you very much, Kristen. Mm -hmm. Third metacarpal is my moving arm. Stationary arm lines up with her, uh, the uh, lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Okay? <coughs> and I just bring her into ulnar deviation and measure. Now, sometimes when you do this, you have to kind of sneak your fulcrum up a little bit. You'll, you'll see this. As long as you keep everything in line, your, your moving arm and your stationary arm in line, it's okay if your axis moves a little bit. That is okay. Um, so your norm for ulnar devi deviation is 30 degrees, and for radial deviation it's 20 degrees. Okay, so you always have a little more ulnar than you have radial.